Hello, good evening to you. My name is Apostle Larry, and uh, it's my pleasure to be coming your way this hour with the Word of God. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for this glorious moment. I surrender my lips, my tongue, my spirit unto you, and I'm asking you to use it as a channel to speak the words of life to my hearers. I give you thanks and praise for being a part of this in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, I'm trusting God that it will be the next few minutes we're going to spend together will be very fruitful and profitable. Um, I'm going to continue what I've been sharing with us on knowing Jesus fully and the segment is um, rather the, 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 uh, the part or the sequel, the, the follow up is um, Jesus the high priest. Why is Jesus our high priest? Okay, so I want to just uh, do a little bit extra to what I've done in the past and just quickly tell you about what I shared with us last week. I shared with us that uh, the, the, well, the basis of the whole discussion is this. Now, Jesus is referred to as our high priest. But we know that from um, the Levitical laws, the laws of Moses, um, it is the tribe of Levi that was chosen to minister in the temple. And from the tribe of Moses, the family of Aaron was appointed to be priests and to minister unto the Lord. Now, in the, in the mind of the Jews and in their belief system, the priest was very crucial. And so, um, now, Jesus had come and was preaching about the Father. And then he said he was the way, the truth, and the life. He was the door. And all that uh, and then he, he was crucified and he died and resurrected um, and the apostles began to teach about the fact that Jesus actually has stepped into his office as the high priest uh, that is to represent us before God now which is okay for those of us who are Gentiles and we didn't have any background before uh, regarding our relationship with God now here uh, Paul has to write the epistle to the Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, to clarify certain things. And I made it clear that by definition, a priest had, had certain duties to perform. Whenever you are dealing with a priest, that priest becomes a mediator between you and the spirit being. And the priests are usually consecrated or anointed or appointed for that purpose. And the Bible clearly says that nobody can take that honor unto himself. So God is the one who appoints us and calls us to be priests. Now, one of the reasons why I began to share on uh, the, the offices of Jesus, the, the, the very special offices of Jesus, it is to help us have a, a better understanding of those functions so that we can uh, benefit from them better. Because if we do not understand who Jesus is, there's no way that you can receive from Someone you do not know. Hallelujah. And I began by uh, mentioning, uh, quoting uh, Matthew chapter 10, the verse 41, which says, that, which says that he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So the way you know a person will determine what you receive from the person. Now, if Jesus is our high priest, then it's important we know what a high priest does or what a priest does. And I, I quickly want to go through that. I did that yes last time. First of all, the priest offers sacrifices on our behalf. The priest is the one who stands between us and, and God. And the priest also offers prayers and intercessions for us on behalf of us. Okay, so those are the basic functions of a priest. The basic thing, the most important really. Uh, uh, things that a priest would do for you. Okay, so the Jewish man or the Jewish woman knows this very well and so uh, expects that anybody who is a priest uh, should perform these functions for him. But now Jesus has come and has died and we know that, uh, you know, the scripture says that there's no need any longer for any animal sacrifice because Jesus offered himself on the cross 
Now, it takes a, a, a spiritually discerning mind uh, to understand this. You see, now, when you are used to a priest taking your offering from you, slaughtering the animal, pouring the blood, atoning for your sins, you know, and then you f go home feeling good that you have been, you have uh, made a uh, appeasement with God and that you don't have to worry again to a system whereby you don't have to offer blood no more. You don't have to offer an animal no more. And then you are wondering, am I really on the right track or not? Are you with me? So this is, or this was the dilemma certain Jewish believers were going through. Hallelujah. And some of them were tempted to actually be Christians and at the same time practice the old uh, Judaism ritual that is by offering animals going to the priest and offering animals now it is important you realize that uh, these three things I mentioned which a priest does for uh, will do for anyone we got to find those things in the life of Jesus now in um, Hebrews chapter chapter 4 the verse 14 says, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, the, but one who in every respect has, uh, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, Paul spent time elaborately to explain the priesthood of Jesus. And that's why it's important for us to understand because if a Jewish man needed to be, uh, needed to have this and explain to him or her, a Jewish man or woman, then you and I also need to understand this. Then we can better appreciate this office of Jesus and be able to enjoy it. Now, so Jesus did not come from a family of Aaron or from a, uh, the Levite tribe. He came from the tribe of Judah. Now, how did he become a priest? Now, we settled that before. Now, the Bible says in, in uh, 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 Psalm 110 that God swore that he would be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, we know from Genesis chapter 14, that he met Abraham and received that from Abraham and he blessed Abraham. And the Bible says that he was the king of Salem and, 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 uh, and that the, he had no beginning or end of days. Hallelujah. So there was no way to trace the ancestry of Melchizedek. And the Bible says that God linked Jesus, the order of the priesthood of Jesus, to Melchizedek. Now, the Bible also tells us that no one can take that honor unto himself. So, if God appointed Jesus, then it is settled, it is final. Hallelujah. And so, here we see that uh, since no one can take this honor upon himself, and it is God who must appoint, and God has already uh, ordained Jesus as the high priest, as a priest unto Himself. Then that part is settled. Hallelujah. Now another thing which I, I need to bring up, perhaps which might help you relate to this very well, is that now remember that Jesus already began His intercessory ministry for us before He went to the cross, and now He is in heaven. The records states that he is in heaven interceding for us remember in uh john chapter 17 there are about 16 17 there are about when he began to intercede and pray in the guy uh, in the garden intercede for uh his disciples and all those who are going to come to believe on him through them you see that already began the intercessory ministry of jesus so we are settled about that uh, aspect now, another part that really might intrigue you is that, uh, and, and for us to realize that God actually ended the Aaronic priesthood in terms of them representing us before God. God ended that whole system. And like Hebrews says, 
when the priesthood has ended then the law also with back that priesthood must be terminated now are you aware today in israel that there is no temple and it is in the temple that they offered sacrifices and the people brought their gifts till today the jews have no temple in jerusalem in a place the place where the temple was that is where you have a mox today so and they are saying as long as there's no temple there is no way they can offer sacrifices hallelujah there's no way they can offer sacrifices when there's no temple so how are they serving god those who are still practicing judaism well they gather in their synagogues in their many places and they offer prayers and they also do arms that is a replacement for the animal sacrifices that they were offering you see until they come to realize that god had replaced all that with the sacrificial death of jesus on the cross you see so that is still amazing that after now those who are not yet uh believers that's the jewish uh people who are not yet believers in christ still practice um you know do the old rituals but they cannot offer animals because there's no temple there's no place to offer that now another thing you realize is that the bible uh, history tells us that the temple was destroyed in ad 70 ad 70 if my history is correct now and jesus had already prophesied that this was going to happen now because there is no temple they cannot offer those sacrifices which they used to offer which the bible says does not really take away their sins but it only covers it and makes god to remember their sins from year to year so you who is listening to me you have to realize that there's no amount of prayer or good deeds that you can do which will pacify god and which will cover your sins and your mistakes it is only when jesus the great high priest intercedes on your behalf when he goes to God on your behalf, when he presents his own blood on behalf of you to God, that is when your sins will be atoned for. Hallelujah. So, is it just by coincidence that the temple is no more and and, 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 and till now, for how many years since uh, you know, the temple was destroyed? Over 2,000 years since the temple was destroyed. I mean, there is no place they can offer blood sacrifice no more. It's a clear sign that god had changed the system isn't it awesome so if there is no temple to offer sacrifice then how will god forgive our sins so then you realize that the priesthood of jesus makes sense that he died on the cross he shed his blood in fact he said himself that he came that he must give his life for us so the son of man came to save that which was lost okay so clearly he fits into uh, the type of the messiah that we have been and that had been anticipated all the years hallelujah so this is just to to, to kind of uh, put the perspectives right for you to realize that jesus christ the son of the living god is our great high priest amen now i began by saying that unless you know what a person can give to you you cannot expect much from him now you know that jesus is god's duly appointed high priest then you can look up to him to first of all represent you before god because you cannot approach god because god is a holy god amen the, uh, the 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 sinner cannot approach a holy god so you need god you need an intermediary and that intermediary is who jesus christ secondly you cannot approach god empty-handed you must approach god with a sacrifice now and remember that the sacrifice which you present must be acceptable now jesus offered his own life the bible says a body that has prepared for me 
I came to fulfill your will, do your will, in the volume of the book where it is written of me. Now, God had already prepared all these things that Jesus must represent us. He must offer his own life as a sacrifice on our behalf. So if you do not accept these things, then you cannot receive of the forgiveness of God and be, and be accepted by him. Hallelujah. And finally, the high priest or the priest does intercession. Jesus, the scriptures tells us that he ever lived to make intercession for us. Hallelujah. Now, if you can accept these things, these responsibilities or functions of the priest, and realize that Jesus had, had stepped into that role to fulfill this, this, um, these functions, then whatever happens to you, if you need someone to call upon God for you, if you need somebody to go before God for you, if you need somebody uh, to offer a, a sacrifice or to present your sacrifice unto God, uh, then you have to realize that Jesus, the great high priest, is in that office right now. He is the one to stand before God. He is the one to represent you before God. He is the one to offer an acceptable sacrifice on your behalf. Are you willing to take that? Hallelujah. It is very awesome and wonderful and satisfying to know that God for, for so, and he had already planned ahead of time that this is the way things were going to go. Wherever you are, if you will accept what Jesus has done and the role he's playing for you, then you can receive of his priestly ministry. It is awesome that Jesus is not only a king, but he is also a priest. Isn't it awesome? All these aspects of Jesus, we need to know. So we can enjoy and we can receive all that he has for us. The reason why the church is so fragmented is that they have not understood the full ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody takes their part about what he or she has a revelation and goes with that. And he misses the other ministries that Jesus fulfills. But I pray that with this short uh, message and teaching, you will be able to avail yourself of the full ministry of Jesus Christ. Look out for the other uh, parts of my message on knowing Jesus in his fullness. Thank you very much for spending this time with me. It's been a joy. And if you want to contact me, uh, look up the number on the screen and uh, just give me a call or drop me an email and I'll be more than glad to write back to you. The Lord bless you richly. And have a wonderful week until I see you again next week. Bye-bye.